Nick, your scoping study, you just put out your announcement and you mentioned you had a high grade profile study results. Can you give us an update on this, please? Certainly can, Tracy, and, uh, and great to be on, uh, on Invest in News again. Look, the scoping study came out quite recently, um, and it was it's it was uh, it was something it was an itch that we wanted to scratch in the sense that uh, we had to uh, we were missing one of the key licenses in the scoping study when we released it previously. We just couldn't wait to get it to market, so we had to release on the two licenses that we had uh, with regards to resource numbers. Uh, but since then, Figura, uh, the third uh, license and a very high grade deposit as well, has come through. Uh, and we knew that was going to make a significant impact to the scoping study. So we, we were just compelled to go and uh, reschedule those tonnes, bring in those Figura tonnes, those very high-grade tonnes, and and uh, and see what the impact was on the financial model. I'm really pleased to say, and I'm sure you've seen the results, but uh, we're seeing that very high-grade uh, uh, early-year profile extended out beyond the five or six years that we initially had with the, with the two-licence uh, scoping study. We're seeing that, that runway build out to seven or eight years, nine years, and that has an enormous impact on operating costs for us. So really nice to see those high-grade tonnes coming through and that, uh, that additional cash flow. Um, but also, to, we wanted to run through at the new spot price as well to just test what that impact was. So we, you know, we like understanding where we sit with prices in the real time, um, and they just look better and better. You know, it's $61 uh, per kilo of NDPR, which is, I think, the number we used uh, for, this, uh, for this update. Couldn't be better. Really happy with the metrics coming through. 1.4 billion uh, US pre-tax and an IRR of around 40%. I mean, they're great numbers at a low at a low metal price, and that's that's the opportunity with this particular project. Well, from our perspective, there are endless opportunities. And for those of you out there going Meteoric Resources, which just broke a quarter of a billion dollar market cap. Can you give them a little bit of an update about the ionic clays you have in Brazil and the competitive advantage? That you have for being a rare earth provider. Absolutely, and you know, I think I think you've already touched on it. We've got a very high grade deposit within that high grade deposit, and that's at, at its average grade of two thousand six hundred ppm. It's well outside the bell curve of what a typical ionic clay project looks like. Um, typically, in China, you see projects which are you know ionic clay deposit which is somewhere between five hundred and twelve hundred ppm, and worldwide you see that as well. But in around Brazil, where we are. We're seeing something very different. We're seeing very high grades, 2,600 ppm, so well outside that uh, that distribution curve. Uh, but not only that, we're seeing really good uh, ionic uh, clay response to an AM cell wash. So those very robust uh, minerals that you typically see in clays in other parts of the world, uh, which are sort of misnamed as ionic clay deposits, those minerals have been broken down very much weathered down and have been released into that clay environment. So you, again, you're seeing that very, very high response to that very simple flow sheet that, uh, which contains the ammonium sulfate wash. Uh, and for that reason, high grades coupled with a very low cost flow sheet and also the very low cost key metrics that we have. We've got great logistics around the project area as well. It's a very much a plug and play project. We don't need to go and build an infrastructure project to get, get the project underway. Uh, all those, all those, uh, those connective pieces of tissue that you require to build a mining project are there. Uh, we've got low cost power, all those things combined to make uh, this a very low cost operation, Tracy. Well, you're not just a low cost operation with competitive minerals. I'm gonna get back to that in just a second, but we just did an investor talk where two of the top ESG experts in the world actually participated and attended. And I think that may have something to do with how you're proceeding and how Brazil just announced you're part of their climate platform. Can you tell us more about this? Yeah, absolutely, Tracy. Look, we're really excited about this. So we've been included on the BIP. Uh, it's the Brazil investment platform, but it's really got a focus around projects of significance in the energy transformation space. And uh, I'm very pleased to say that the Caldera project was the only mining project named on that list, that initial list. Uh, it's a fund that's been set up in collaboration between the Brazilian government um, the Development Bank of Brazil and industry. So those three three key components in, within Brazil have come together. They've set up this platform. It's a ten point eight billion dollar fund, I think, from memory, uh, and that cash is there to be deployed uh, as debt uh, to the to the, uh, the to the the projects of 
that they see as passing those hurdles at that FID decision point. So we're not quite at FID yet. Uh, we're progressing as uh, we're absolutely on track to getting to FID by the end of next year. Uh, we're on track in all our key uh, our key work packages, uh, but so, you know we're absolutely going to be looking to make uh, make the best as, the best that we possibly can of that uh, of that fund when we get to that FID decision. Well, the experts seem very pleased with your answers, and I noticed that you have a processing partner as well in place. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about this? Sure, it's it's a recent it's a recent update, uh, Tracy. I think we announced it at the uh, Critical Minerals uh, Institute conference, actually in Toronto. Uh, but there's only a couple of months ago. But uh, no, we've got had a we've just announced an MOU, a non-binding MOU, with a uh, a company called Ucor. They're North American based, uh, but they're looking to build their their initial processing plant in Louisiana, uh, and we are looking to supply around three thousand tons of REO per annum to them. As, as a starting point, and we'll see where that goes after that. Uh, but really exciting. It's a great uh, great collaboration. We like the work that those guys are doing. Uh, we've got some faith in the technology. Um, they still need to get it uh, operating at a commercial level, but you know, we believe that they, they, they are going to get there. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing that Louisiana facility in, uh, in Alexandria come to the fore and, and start accepting molecules from Brazil from the Caldera project sometime in, uh, in late 2027, tw early 2028. And of course, I think I heard you have quarterly results uh, coming up. Can you give us a bit of an update on what we should be looking forward to in this upcoming month or two? Sure. Well, I think we've touched on a lot of the uh, the key uh, news events uh, within that quarterly. But it, what it demonstrates is, you know, we, even though we are in that uh, in that very in the very much you know, we're sort of partway through that Lasson curve, uh, we're in that orphan period where most projects don't get a lot of love at the share you know, on the in the share market side of things. Uh, lots of boring studies going on at the moment, but important studies uh, that we are ticking along. Uh, we're doing quite nicely with regards to our share price. You know, we've had a little bit of an uplift in the last couple of days. Uh, we raised some money towards the end of last quarter. Um, so I think our treasury at the, uh, at the start of the last quarter was sitting at around just over $40 million. We're burning around $1.5 million Aussie uh, a month at this stage. So I'll let you guys work out uh, where that sits at the moment. We have a quarterly that's just about to drop, so I can't actually share that exact number with you, Tracy. Uh, but you know we're tracking well. Um, we've got a lot of all our all our key packages are well and truly on track, uh, and that's important, uh, particularly the permitting. Uh, permitting is is absolutely uh, on time at the moment. We've got our uh, public hearings coming up, community public hearings, very important part of the uh, the permitting process with regards to, to getting our environmental permits. Um, so uh, all those key packages are on track, and we're and we're we're doing well, Tracy. For everybody out there who would like to learn more about Meteoric Resources, please go to their website. And Nick, as always, it's a pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks, Tracy.